Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. This video is a recording of the webinar we conducted in one of the UiPath community group. This is the second session of the recording. In the first session, we have completed this hands-on lab on a use case which is called the HR of a letter generation. The first one was completely built on the concept of RE framework along with Q. This recording is for university or the college record creation robot. In terms, what are we going to cover? We are going to build a complete project in RE framework. We would be using RE framework without the queues. That means we would be using data table to build RE framework. We would have step by step demonstration that how exactly can we convert the RE framework to work with data tables. We would create the end to end use case for data management, which simply means that how I can actually go and insert the data in various application, right? So I have provided both the links in the description so you can refer that. This is the second use case, which is called the university or college robot creation robot, right? What does it mean? So we all, this is the problem statement, right? So I'll just repeat without spending much time on it and we'll directly go to the session. Okay. So any institute, any college or any, you know, a company has a huge amount of data and the data has to be stored in some kind of an application. Now this data can be, a uh, registration related data, a fees data or college structure since most of you are coming from a college background, right? So you have some data which is related to the course, which is related to the fee structure. So just taking a simple example, I have a website, college website, and I just need to upload the course content for all the courses, which keeps on updating, right? So to directly reflect it on the website, maybe I have some application, right? I have student related data where all the students, we have to just enter the data into some application so that we have all the records, right? It may be library related data where we keep all the data, whichever books we are having, who have, uh, you know, got the books, who have written the book, any kind of data, whichever we want to put it into some application, we call this as a record creation thing, right? Now, what exactly we are going to cover? We are having a set of Excel as of now, let's say this one, this can be any list. It can be a list of books. It can be a list of students. It can be a list of enrollment data. It can be course data, anything we have to do is we have to read this data in UiPath and we have to fill up N data in the application. So for this demo, I have pulled up this application, which is called the my CRM application. It can be any application of the web. It can be any application of the company. It can be any application of the college, right? So the idea here, which we are going to see today, if we have to build a use case where we have to simply insert the data and put it into this one, right? Now, many of you who are having experience in RPA UI path, you might be thinking this is simple, a uh, read range, read the Excel, loop the data and fill in here, right? So my job is done, but that will only work only in your laptop, right? So if I have to build it for a company, if I have to build it for a client, right? There should be certain set of uh, good practices we need to handle. There should be exception handling. There should be a complete framework. And when I say framework, we are definitely talking about the RE framework, right? So this use case, we are going to, idea is simple, insert any kind of data into any application. It can be web, browser, anything, right? So <clears throat> this time we are going to start with RE framework with data tables. When I say data table, I am not using orchestrator queues. You might work for a client who does not have orchestrator, right? Say a client who is not interested to work in orchestrator queues. And they say that we want to build the project, but we do not want to build it in RE framework. So RE framework works best with queues, right? So how I need to change the RE framework to work with a different data sources, such as a data table. That is what we are going to learn today. I would be doing it step by step. So you can also follow along in case you are left, you can always watch the recording and you can always re refer. Okay. So guys, this is my input folder in the input folder. I have this place E data practice project. I have this input Excel, which is this one. And I have a sample application, which is this place, right? Now I go to my UiPath studio. <clears throat> Since we are creating it for a business project, I am going to take a robotics enterprise framework. Click on it, it will load the robotics enterprise framework template for me. First best practice, whenever you are starting any project, make sure that the data name is given, right? So I just say entry data, data entry project, 
and re framework or i can just say here the same thing data entry project first best practice always name the project properly right if you see i can always name the project at project 1 project 2 project 3 why renaming is convention why naming convention is important because if i have to run this automation from orchestrator we need to deploy this orchestra deploy this process and in the orchestrator if i am looking the names like project 1 project 2 project 3 how would you verify right how would you know which process is what that is why always name the project properly now one thing i just want to quickly share here let's say by mistake you created an automation whose name is already project one right now you realize okay i need to have updated a good name right do i need to recreate the entire project the answer is no right all the project have something which is called project.json file this one right so all you have to do is let's say i don't like the name data entry project i go to open project folder something like this in the project.json file just right click on the project edit with some of the editor let's say i have the notepad plus plus maybe i'll just double click and yeah this one you just have to update the name here save it and it will reflect right so no need to create the project again okay so i am back in my uipath studio so the first thing is open the main workflow because this is where the automation gets started how do i know if you see here in the main, there is the small green icon available, right? This one, this indicates that if you run this process from anywhere from orchestrator or from here, this XAML will execute first, right? So this green arrow indicates that by default, RE framework has four states. RE framework is completely built on the concept of state machine in it, get transaction, process transaction and end process, right? So in case you are not aware of what exactly are the state machine what all these things are done there is a dedicated course on uipath academy which talks about all these four stages and i also have covered re framework in uh, previous sections right so we will share the videos you can refer that so i'll quickly give uh, give a glimpse at what happens right if you see here in the re framework it will start from this button start the first thing which will execute is this one initialization now in the initialization it says that i am going to read the configuration file and initialize the applications which are being used in process that's it in the initialization you are not going to write any code which is related to the business right it is only having one arrow which is system exception right it is nowhere it is having something called business exception right so in the initialization only the code of reading the configuration file and initializing the application would be used now when i say configuration file why it is important and what it is right so if you go to the project folder in the data you would have something which is called config.xlsx right so what is this config.xlsx this is a file which is a plain excel file in which we keep all the settings which we feel might change in future Taking a simple example, for example, I am developing this automation in my personal development machine, right? So the emails are coming to Mukesh email ID. When I move this process to a client machine, my client is Rohit. Ro, now Mukesh should not receive the emails. Who should receive? Rohit should receive. Now, if I hard code this value in the UiPath automation, what would happen? Every time you have a change, you have to change the automation. That is why all the things, whatever are changing in the automation, we keep these things configurable. By default, RE framework has this config file. You just have to keep the key and the value here and RE framework will done the rest of the job for you. No need to do anything here, right? So let's get started. I hope you understand what is config. So this is the config. We will put all the things, whichever we expect might change in future. Okay. So I am back in my UiPath studio. Okay. First thing is the initialization. So what happens in the initialization? If you will see, there is no magic happening in RE framework, right? Everything is a code. So how does RE framework manages? If you see, I just collapse everything in the initialization. This is nothing but a state machine, right? The first code which will execute in initialization is whatever you have written in the entry section, right? In the entry section, UiPath has given us this try catch, which means that it will try to write this code, execute this code. If any exception, this object will get executed, right? A simple try catch as of now. 
if i just open this so the first activity which will execute in re framework is this guy which says system exception is equal to nothing which means that at the beginning ui path is telling me that there is no exception right because we have not executed anything so there is no exception at all right system exception is equal to nothing and we are absolutely okay what is system exception if you go to the variables you could see that it is an exception we have not executed anything so system exception is nothing as i move forward it says that first time it will say that the config object is nothing what is this config object so this config object is a dictionary of string and object now why string and object whatever value i put in the config file re framework will read that for me and give me in the form of string and object now you might be thinking mukesh they could have directly given you string and string this is string this is string right why string and object what if i have a value uh, which is a number here what if i have a value which is a decimal here right so that is why it is the key would be always a string and this value would be a object right because i can easily convert the object that is why an interview question very common question what exactly is the type of config object so the config object is a dictionary of string and object right so the first thing which happens in re framework is it see this is a if condition no need to change the first thing it will go and check the primary res resolution this is basically to lock the primary resolution in case i deploy this project to some other machine in the production environment or to the customer and i want to know the screen resolution this will print right so no need to change this keep it there the second thing is the init all settings xaml so as the name suggests initialize all the settings now the question arises how would this guy know where are the settings it's not a magic you go to import arguments and you would see here let it load yep the it is going to read the config file from data config.xlsx which is the same file and it is going to read the data from settings and constants right so it is going to read this data and this data and once the reading has been done it is going to return me something this is an out argument right this is the input and this is the output both of them this data this sheet this sheet read the data and get a config you don't need to change anything but if you want to explore more you can always click on the open workflow and see what code re framework has written here or ui path has written here right so basically it is reading all the file one by one and adding those data to the dictionary in case it fails it raises an exception for that okay so no need to change anything here at all we are good now the next thing is this two you will find here which is in orchestrator queue name and in orchestrator queue name right now this is in case you are having an automation which has to be made backward compatible right so as of now i am in ui path version of 20 which is the latest one so this is for the backward compatible process right so again you can leave this to the default settings because whenever i am working i hope we are working in the latest one but in case you have something you just have to provide this name in the config file but if you are not doing you can just leave this to the default settings or you can remove them there is no problem at all okay the next thing so till now i have not written any piece of code right now the next thing is kill all process this xaml is important so this is the first run okay now whenever i am running the automation i want the automation to start in a clean environment when i say a clean environment i simply mean so for example i my automation is going to use this input excel and my automation is going to use this sample crm now you have to think from a production machine point of view that for example your automation was supposed to start at 9 am in the morning 8:30 am in the morning what happens a robot get triggers and it was trying to read the data from the excel and the excel is stuck the excel is hang on the screen or let's say some other application was using the browser and the browser stuck the browser is not responding now at 9 am in the morning if your automation is coming you would see your automation will feel okay these two application are stuck and your automation goes into a toss right so that is why whenever i start my automation i always make sure that the environment is clean to environment is clean i simply go to this xaml which is called kill all process right which simply means kill all the processes which are there now it does not mean that you have to kill all these thing chrome edge ui path and all these thing 
or the Zoom for that matter. You have to kill only the application which you are using in the automation. So that is the first thing. As a developer, you should be always aware of that. What are the application I am using? So I simply go to open workflow, right? This is the log message which says killing of processes, right? So this message would be available when you run it in the debug mode or when you run it from the orchestrator, right? So this log will say killing of the processes, but there is no code here, right? So we need to add the first piece of code here, which is called kill process. Like this, drag and drop it here. <clears throat> okay. Now, what is which process I want to kill? I want to kill Excel. So simple, right? Excel here like this, right? Now kill process, there is always a good practice. Go here and change the name to Excel. Do not put dot exe here because if you dot put a dot exe here, what would happen? It would not work, right? So we just need to put the process name and the process name for Excel is Excel. Now, if I save this, I go here, I just close this Excel. So what would happen when we run this automation? It will simply go and kill the Excel. Now, the next thing is we want to kill this application as well, right? This source sample CRM application because we are using it. Where is this sample CRM application? This CRM application as of now is available in my location here, right? So I simply go here, right click on it and uh, we can say that get the path. Okay, so copy as path. I will get the complete path of the EXE, right? Now I'm getting the path of the EXE. Now, if I simply go here, so I go here, drag and drop the kill process. If you go here in the folder, my application name is my CRM, right? So if I go here and I simply type here in the process name, my CRM, okay? Now I have got the kill process and in here, I will write my CRM, right? Because I want my environment to be clean. Now, in case you want to run a specific XAML, you can always put a debugger here. So that is one more benefit of RE framework. If I want to run a specific piece of code, I do not want to rerun the entire automation again. I can simply run this part only by going here and I say debug the file, right? I want to run only this piece of automation. So that is where you would use debug the file. I'm not going to run the complete automation again, right? So now you will see what is the benefit of this log messages, okay? One more thing, whenever you are writing any automation, you have to make sure that there are sufficient logs which are available because when this process is running in an unattended mode, how would you know what has went wrong, right? So now if you will see here, I have opened this Excel, kill process Excel, I go step into, now what would happen if this is in running in some different environment, you could see that the application is gone, right? It's now more available. Now, this CRM is open here, I go to step into, and it closed the CRM also, right? But sometime what might happen, you may not be able to get this name. Now, what would you do? In that case, you have this other option, which is called the process, right? A process type or object describing the process to be used, right? Now, how would you get all the processes, right? So let me quickly tell you that as well. So see, UiPath has this activity, which is called get processes. Now, when I say get processes, what would happen? It will get all the processes which are running on the computer in the task manager. Okay. It will get you all the list of the processes. Now, when you have all the list of processes, we can simply apply an if statement here that if the process type is this, if the process name is this, if the process name is like this, just get the process name from here and pass it to here. Right. So that is in case when you don't exactly know the process exe name here, it was visible for me. So I was directly able to kill it. Right. I'll again go and reopen. Right. So that is the only code we have to write in the kill all process. I'll do the save and come back. Okay. So that is the only code. First in the kill process, you need to specify all the things which you are using and you need to kill it. Why we are killing? Because when I want to start, I make sure that and everything is clean. Then the next thing. This one is the max consecutive system exception exceeded. This is a pretty interesting and it's a new feature or recently UiPath RE framework has introduced. Okay. So a question to all of you who are on the chat on this call, and I want to ask you a question, right? Let's say you have added 20 transaction to a queue or you have got 20 transactions to process. So after the five transaction are successful, transaction number six got failed, seven got failed, eighth got failed, right? Do you want to continue to the all the 25 transactions 
or do you want to stop at transaction number nine? So what do you guys think would be a good approach? So my five transactions are successful. Seven, eight, nine are failing. Okay. So nine got failed. Okay. So everybody is saying continue right now. That is a good answer that everybody wants to say that. Okay. Till five was successful. Seven, eight, nine got failed. So we want to again continue for 10, 11, 12, 30. Now again, adding one more information to my question. What if all those three transactions are failing because the system is not accessible because of some system exception. So I am pretty sure that if I run this from nine to 25, I am again going to receive the same exception. Now, do you still want to continue? No, somebody says no, right now. Somebody would be saying yes, right now that as a developer, I cannot take the decision, right? The decision lies with the process owner or who owns the business, right? But the main thing is with the help of the new RE framework customization, you can actually make this change, right? So if you go here in the config, whatever you have, right? In the project data config file. So let me quickly show it to you where you can actually control that thing, right? So I'll close this in the constants. Okay, let me, okay, I'll just get the key from here. Max consecutive system exception. Okay, so here somewhere in the config, you will have max consecutive system exception, this guy. The default value is zero, right? So if you change it to three, four, or five, what would happen? It will again stop after that amount of transaction in case of system exception, right? So by default, it is zero. That means it will continue whatever everybody told me, right? But in case you have a situation like that, you just have to update that number and no need to change anything in the code, right? This code is already there, but that is to handle that situation, which we just discussed. Okay. Now we are done with this part. So in the initialization, we are done with this part. We have uh, in the config read, we have read the config consecutive set thing done. Now I have killed the Excel and I have killed this application. Now, if I want to write the automation, so I need to open the applications as well, right? Whatever I have killed, because if I want my automation to run, I should need to open the application as well. So in the init all application, this is a simple XAML, which says that initialize all the application, whatever you have opened, right? So I simply go to open workflow. Now opening application, do not remove these default log messages or do not put anything code above it. Because if you put anything above it in the logs, the application would already been open and then you would get an opening message, right? Code would come after here. Opening application, whatever application you are using, just use a open application and that's it, right? So I'm just going to here use something which is called open application. It is going to ask me indicate the application on the window. I just click on here and I indicate it to this one. That's it, right? My job is done. So what we are doing, we have just gone and open this application. Now you might be thinking, Mukesh, you never opened Excel, right? Because Excel, I can directly open whenever I require, right? There is no point in opening a blank Excel like this and then browsing for the data, right? I can actually open the Excel with the help of Excel application scope, read range whenever I require, but this application, I have kept it open right now. So this is also done in it. All application is done. We just put the code, whatever we are going to going to use in this application right now in the in it all application. So till now what we have done, we have clean our environment. We have read the config file. We have put the in the in it all application. I am here. I am opening the application. Now, one thing here in the opening of application, if you go to the properties, you would notice the file name UiPath has taken is my e drive data practice project application CRM. Now, do you guys really think that all of them would have the same path? If I give this to, let's say, Shraddha, Mamta, or Ganesh, no, never, right? So, what do we think that we should keep this path? Where should this path be now? Where should I get this path from? Config, right? So we should have this path from the config. Okay. So 
now let's try to do it i'll just copy this path right so that is the thing you have to always always take care whenever you are developing that don't keep anything which is restricted to your local now the thing which i'm going to explain now is how do we put the data to the config i go to the config sheet which is this guy in here in the settings right i just what is the value this is the value right now all you have to do is create the key so i just say here crm app path maybe right a b c d don't put a key like this right you won't understand what it is again the same thing naming convention okay crm application path provide this path and in the description always provide the description so this is the description for path where the crm app is available right always put a nice description you can always learn from how re framework take care of the things right so description why description because in larger project enterprise project you are not the only developer right there are lot of developers so everybody should know what is this path so just copy this path okay and in here now i have already read the config here in in it all here if you go in the in it all settings we have read the config and we have seen that the config object is available in this config right so the same object is getting passed in the in it all application see re framework is already passing the in it config for me so no need to write any code this is just you should know how to use it in the in it all application if you go to the arguments you would see that config object is already available so i simply go to open application in the properties here instead of this i say that from the config and now you just need to pass the key which we just made dot to string that's it right and a good practice again i wanted to know if this is correct or not so what i do here from the activities i will actually go and put a log message right because i want to know what is my robot doing i go and take a info level log and i just say opening the application okay like this opening application this i am creating a log to refer it backtrack job done go back save everything my excel is again saved i'll close the excel crm is open let's go to the main workflow and try to run this file i go here and i say run now what is happening the complete automation is running end to end i have this crm open now what would happen the robot would start right you could see here the robot has started initializing it has killed and it has opening the application from this and it says could not retrieve transaction because we have not raised this point right so that means my initialization part is completed now before i proceed do you think i have written a whole lot of code in doing this setting or do you think that if you are writing it without re framework you would be able to do it faster reading the configuration file killing opening exception handling everything right so that is already done by re framework for us right so that is why use you know you should very ha have a good understanding of re framework right so that's it right i just need to do only that setting that's it my job is done now if you see here what is the best part state machines works on the concept of transition so what does what is happening here it says that whenever you are initializing you are opening the application you are reading the config file in case you get some exception you simply have to end the process right that makes sense because if my applications are not there if my config is not there there is no point in going further right so that why it says application exception but the question is how would it know that it is an exception the answer is simple if you simply click on this system exception in the transition you would see that this is the same object system exception is nothing right this is the same object at the beginning of the re framework if you notice it has got system exception is equal to nothing it is saying that i don't have any exception while doing this it got some exception so your exception object is now initialized that means your exception object has now got some value now in the transition it is just checking a simple check a simple if condition is my system exception is nothing if i have no exception then you go to get transaction in case it is not nothing that means you have got some exception 
you go to end process. As I told, there is no magic. Everything is code. System exception. This one, you got some ex exception in the initialization. No point in running this one. Just go to end process. So first state is completed. The second state is end process. In the end process, what happens? You simply close all the application, right? Because I need to be very sure. I have opened this application. I have opened Excel. So it is a dev. It is the responsibility of the developer to close the application, whatever you have opened, right? So in the close all application, simply click on open workflow, closing the application. Now this is a soft kill. Okay. So in RE framework or in terms of robotics, we have two kill. I would say one is soft kill and one is hard kill. Soft kill is if I want to kill this application, I have two options. I can always close this from here. Or I can simply go to task manager and from here we say kill the application, right? So if I do it properly from here like this, this is close, right? For ending the processes, log out, closing of the application. So now in here, if I want to close this application, I just simply use an attach application. So I am assuming that this application would be already open, right? So I just use attach window here because let's say we got some exception after opening this application, right? So indicate window pointed to this. And then I simply go and say, click. Okay. Drag and drop the click here and point it to the close button like this, right? So this, I have done a soft close of the application. Now, one thing, what might happen if I am doing the soft close, I might got some exception. I might get an exception in selector not found. This button is not available. This application not responding. Anything might happen right now. Again, the same thing. If you see here in the properties, UiPath have taken the selector, right? It has taken the selector of this one, right? So selector is the property which actually is able to identify the element on the screen. What if this selector is not available? What if this close button is not available, right? So no need to do anything again. RE framework has got us covered. It says in case you get any exception in closing the application, this exception will be get caught. And here RE framework will log a message for you, which would say application was not able to close gracefully. It would say that I tried to close the application with your method. I got some exception. This is your exception. And now I am killing the process. Now, when I say killing the process, this is the same XAML we coded at the beginning, right? So now first it will try to graceful close. And then if it is exception, then it will forcefully close. So this completes my second state as well. So now I have completed the init and I have completed the end process. Now a question, do you think I have written a lot of code till now and I have completed two states? Are you guys following along with me? Are you understanding why we are doing when, what code we should write, right? So I hope everybody is following and you guys are getting. So we have completed two transactions, two state machines, two states in the, uh, this one, uh, RE framework, right now. Can you explain max consecutive, uh, exception if possible? Okay. Sarita, we'll take that question at the end. Okay. So please keep the questions parked. So I'll definitely answer it at the end. Okay. Now I have got this initialization. It is successful in case of exception. We go to end process in the end process. We soft kill. If soft kill is failing, we close this. Now the next one is called the get transaction data, get transaction data as the name implies, right? Get the transaction data, right? But as of now, if you open this one, so by default, RE framework is coded to work with something which is called orchestrator queue, right? So by default in this one, you have something as XAML, which is called get transaction data dot XAML. If I go and click on open workflow, you would see that RE framework is reading the data from Q get transaction item. And this is a queue item, but every time I may not have a queue item, right? So that is where, what you have to do is I want to read the data from a data table. So the first change, first change in RE framework, which you have to do is in the arguments in the transaction item, transaction item here is a Q item, right? Whenever you have to work with a data table, right? So what is a data table? A data table is a collection of data rows, right? So this is my input Excel. 
And if I ask you that what is the transaction, this is the first transaction, this is the second transaction, this is the third transaction. So if I read this data in an UI path, I would get something which is called data table. And data table is a collection of data row, right? So one data row, two data row, three data row. So for me, this is the first transaction, this is the second, this is the third, this is the fourth, right? One, two, three, four, like this, right? So the first change, whenever you want to change the default RE framework is you have to change this one transaction item from Q item to something which is called data row. So I go here and I simply say data row. Okay, system dot data dot data row. Why data row? Because I am expecting a data row. That's it. And hit save. Now this get transaction item is no more required. So I just hit control plus D to disable this one, right? So whenever you have to disable the activity, you could use control plus D to enable use control plus E, right? So you can also do it like this, right click, disable activity, right click and, uh, okay, so I go here and right click. So I have already disabled, so enable the activity, right? Or I can simply go and delete this. Now, fine. So we have changed the transaction item to the data row. Now, if I just save this and go back here in the this one in the import argument, you would see that now RE framework is giving me all the items in a form of a data row, right? Now you might be thinking you never read the data. How is this guy going to get the data, right? We have never read the data, right? So that is an absolutely good question. In case you are not using the RE framework, right? So the data would be read in this state or this state. If I'm using orchestrator queues, orchestrator queues will directly get the data from the queues. But since I'm using data table, the table has to be available before I get to the get transaction. So the data has to be read it in the initialization. Now in the initialization, I am having a lot of places. Where should I exactly read the data? Should I read the data here? Should I read the data here? Should I read the data after this? After here, which block should I read the data? It is very important that you should read the data in this one, which is called the first run. Okay. Now, before uh, let me just quickly write the code and then I'll explain why I am saying that you should run, you should put the code here, right? So here to again read the data, I am using an activity which is called read range. Okay. You have two read range, Excel and workbook. I have Excel installed on my machine. So I have privilege of using both. You can use any one of them, right? So I am using the, uh, this one workbook, right? Now, again, the same question workbook path, the workbook path should be a part of the config file. So I again, go to the data and the config file, right? Because for me, the location is different and for you, it could be different, right? So we keep all these things configurable in the config file. So I'll go back to the config file here. I say input path, input path. And here I just paste the complete path and I say Excel full path. That's it. Save this, take this key, copy the key, go back to UI path and the same thing in config. So now the config is this one, right? From the config, read this key dot to string. Now, in this key, the sheet name is data. Some fine day the client decide now the data is changed and I am going to send you with some different name. So that's why always make sure you configure all such details, right? Because you don't want to change your code. It will hardly take you 30 seconds to configure this, but it will save a lot of time in the in terms when the business changes the data, right? So from the for the sheet name also, I just go here and I say from the config, read the sheet name dot to string. That's it, right? Now in terms of range, this range is blank. Why blank? Because I want to read the complete data, this data, right? Now the question in the properties, do my data have headers? Yes, I do have headers. Once you have successfully read it, where do you want to keep it? I want to keep it in a data table. I hit control plus K and I say DT underscore input. That means I am telling you about to store all this data in DT input. Okay. Once this is there, if you see in the variable, 
we already have this one dt transaction data so dt transaction data is something which is by default provided by ui path to work on data table and if you see in the properties of get transaction data right this guy it is already getting passed as an argument dt transaction data right so all you have to do is wherever you are reading the application once you have read the complete data let me go back in the initialization in the first run okay in the first run once you have read this data this data has to be assigned to the transaction data right because it is already getting passed you always can pass this dt input directly there but why do you want to do an extra effort when the things are already in place right so dt transaction data so i am telling you i path that now your transaction data is nothing but the data which i have got from the excel right now one more thing you can directly actually pass this dt transaction data in here that would also work right but i wanted to keep it like that so that we all understand fine now the question why we are writing reading it in the first run for that let me go back to the main workflow right so what happens in re framework whenever you read okay whenever you initialization in the get transaction you get all the transaction one by one right in case you get a new transaction you process the transaction means you do the business operation on that transaction now when i am doing the business operation what would happen either i may get success i may get a business exception or i may get a system exception in case the transaction is successful we go for the next item in case the business exception is there we go for the next transaction but in case of system exception what re framework does it again come to the initialization why it comes to the initialization because if there is a system exception chances are there that let's say this application was not responding so chances are there if i simply come and kill this application it might rework right so re framework comes with this route of system exception it come to the initialization in the initialization it again try to initialize everything and then it tries to rerun the application right now the question why you have written it in the first run because if i write it outside the first run so what's what happened let's say i have got 20 transaction five got successful i am in transaction number six the six got a system exception it got a system exception so it goes to here and in here if i write the simply code in the first line here so what would happen it will again go and read this excel so you already have 20 transaction in the queue and you are again reading this complete data so you have got 25 plus this data every time you have a system exception it is again reading all the data again and again right you don't want to do that because i already have the data in the data table right i don't want to read the data again and again so how do re framework controls that in the first run there is a condition which says config is nothing which simply means that you check if the config object is having a value or not if the config object is having value it is not going to execute any of the code which is written in the first run right so what would happen in term of system exception it will come to the initialization it will see that okay the config object is already initialized which means that this is the second run so i no need to go and execute all of this thing right reading the config and all those things i can simply go to init the application so that is the place where i have written it inside this because if i write it outside the first run what would happen every time there is a system exception it will reread the data and it will reload your transaction item right now do you guys understand why we have written it in the first run in the chat you can let me know that you why you understand right okay fine so that is why the code is written there fine perfect i got a couple of years thank you guys okay so now i have got this initialization all application in case of any exception and process get transaction data and i have got the transaction data directly in the argument here see open our import arguments and this is available right dt transaction data is coming here now all i have to do is now previously re framework was getting all the transaction one by one right so now for me the transaction item is a data row so i simply write an assign activity here 
right in the assign activity i simply write will write an exception which says that my transaction item which is out transaction item out transaction item right my transaction item i am going to get it from the data table now where is my data table my data table is this one right dt transaction data from the transaction data if i just write transaction data dot rows okay get all the rows and get all the values one by one so if i want to get the first row i need to provide one if i want to get the second row sorry if i want to get the first row i need to provide a zero because data table index start from zero right so if i use this expression what would happen ui path will give me this record if i need to get the todd records then i would need to specify here one but the question arises do i hard code it here the answer is no right so how would i actually go right and change this so as of now let me just go and write a zero here okay so now what would happen if i every time run this process every time it is going to give me the first record right because i have mentioned it zero but i don't want to do that right so to make that thing dynamic again you don't have to write any piece of code it is already taken care by re framework for us the all the thing that is required is you just need to understand the framework if you go to the variables you would see re framework has this thing which is called transaction number so re framework is having this transaction number which appends itself every every time every transaction so i can simply use this transaction number its default value is 1 you can change the default value to 0 or you can simply go to get transaction data and in here go here and in here i say in transaction number minus 1 why minus 1 because the index start with 0 my job is done what would happen first time the transaction number is 1 it will come here 1 minus 1 equal to 0 get the first item second time the transaction number will be 2 2 minus 1 equal to 1 and it will give me the second item that's it my job is done now in the get transaction data this is the change what you have to do okay in the get transaction data see this is what i have done transaction item minus 1 get the data in case of exception throw this exception exception handling is already done in case i am getting nothing out transaction data is not nothing so please mind of this condition this is not nothing which means that i have got some value in the transaction so that is the place i am initializing this thing right so all these things can be actually used in the automation but for this one you can keep this to the default settings as well right so now what has happened here i have got the transaction item now go going back to the this one close the get transaction data this is not required this is not required so we are in the this one right so if you see here by default the transaction item is a queue item here so we have changed it inside the get transaction data but we never change it here right so let me quickly go and update this to data row right because i am not using queues so now in the import arguments we are passing the data table we are passing the transaction number and the output is a data row so this is nothing but my in so how do i know what is this variable you just need to go to the variable see the transaction item so whatever output i am getting from here would be getting stored in transaction item right so by default it was already there but since we changed the data type to queue it got removed right so i need to again specify it here that's it right so what is happening in this flow i am providing the complete data table which is 20 30 50 records providing the transaction number and getting the data row in the form of transaction item that's it save this automation now that is all which i have to do in the get transaction data there is a small change which i'll tell but first i need to understand first we'll understand why and then we'll do the change right as of now we are done here and now what happens if i am able to get a transaction data which means that i have got a new transaction again no magic happening in case you are running a transaction data and you go into no transaction so what is this no transaction transaction item is not nothing that means you have got something from the data table you go to process transaction 
if you go not if you get nothing from the data table which means transaction item is nothing you simply go to end process that's it and in the end process it will close and do everything right so now if you understand from the re framework initialize read the application read the complete data table pass the data table to here in case you get a new item from the data table go and process it in case you get nothing go to no data and end process this also take care of the scenario where there is no data in the excel right so you receive a data from the business where this sheet is blank so what would happen if this sheet is blank you will get no data here and it will end the process so this level of exception handling is done by re framework for us okay now what is the condition for new transaction that you have some item in the transaction now if you go here in the process transaction you would see a couple of failures why this failures because by default it is working with queues so we need to teach re framework that i am providing you a data row see transaction item is a data row here right so if you see here in the process.xaml that what do you want to do with that one and by default it is nothing but a queue item so i simply change it to data row save this go back here and in the import arguments instead in the new transaction item i just pass the transaction uh, what is that let me quickly check so that is transaction item right so i simply go here and i pass the transaction item which is this okay my bad transaction item okay now if you see here this level of coding is done by re framework for us it is already providing the config object it is giving the transaction item now this transaction item is a data row it is not giving you the entire data table it is giving you this first row caitlin's row right now it is asking you tell me mukesh what do you want to do with this one so that logic we will write inside this one so this is the business logic right which we will write inside it but there are some other couple of things which are getting break here right in the set transaction status because it is trying to set the status of the queue right because re framework work best with the queue so i'll just click on open workflow here again see in case of success it goes and update the status to success right but since i do not have this one try catch set transaction status this is setting the status for the queue right so i do not have this one so i simply disable it that's it right again go to go to going to the business exception if there is a business exception right it will set the transaction status of business exception i go here and i disable this as well hit control plus s right so basically i am disabling the pieces wherever i want to set the status right wherever it is setting the status so this is for the queue retry set transaction status if you are using orchestrator queues you do not have to even look at this xaml that is how easy it is right but since i am using this one that is why i need to change it right so in the import arguments again you would see this transaction item is still a queue item right so go to open workflow in the arguments you need to change the transaction uh tick, 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 where it is i'll just expand it uh, like this okay so this is still a queue item so i will point it to data row save this and go back to process in here in the system exception see here it is trying to set the transaction retry number right so here again the same thing wherever you are seeing the as data row you just have to update the transaction status that's it okay so that is saying that in transaction item dot retry number so transaction item is coming in the form of data row and data row is not having this retry number that's why okay so go back save everything go back here save everything i click on import arguments let me check okay so if this is updated yes this is updated to data row now and job done right so what is the job of set transaction status guys so set transaction status is used to update the status of the queue item so for example i have got 50 transaction 5050 what happens to this 50 transaction did it got failed did it got success right 
every each and every detail has updated in the orchestrator queues with the help of set transaction status now we are not using orchestrator queues so i updated the queue item i just disabled it but you do not disable this complete set transaction xaml the reason for that if you see here at the bottom after success business or the system exception there is something which is happening which is called increment the transaction index now why is this increment this increment if you remember we already have the transaction number whose default value is one so who is responsible for updating that transaction number this is also an interview question the increment of the transaction number happens in set transaction status this guy so this guy is responsible for updating the transaction number right this one so i just only comment the queue part if i simply disable this complete set transaction xaml what would happen you would every time get keep getting the first record again and again right i do not want to do that so that is there in the main if i go right i see some exception in the process transaction where exactly it is it would be in the exception part here right so the same thing in the set transaction status let me quickly validate yes it is all good okay so go back here why still i am getting an exception i think i forgot somewhere okay here in the set transaction import argument so it is already done but uh, ui part take it some time to reflect so i'm just clicking on this and uh, as you can see i'm changing nothing right because set transaction status dot xaml is a single xaml you change it one place everywhere it is getting reflected but sometime it is taking some time to reflect right so now we are good at least with the framework part now let me quickly go to the process transaction and in the process transaction what we will do in here we are getting this transaction item one by one right which means that uh, in the argument i am getting this data row so let me quickly go here and it says started process that means till now i have opened this crm application i have got this input data and this row now before i insert entering the data here let me quickly try to print this data so i'll go and take an assign activity i'll hit control plus k and i say str underscore name now naming best practices guys this is one of the very common mistake which i have seen so people start development and when it comes to the naming of the variable they simply write a simply write b simply write c right that is not a good practice i am trying to get the name the name is of type string str is again uh, uh you know it depends so for me i like to have the variable name so i just say that this is a string variable which is going to store name don't use a b and c right so from the in transaction item which is a data row i want to get the column name now what is the column name the column name is first name control c go back here control v dot to string so if i am able to print this first name i can say that yes i am able to get the transactions one by one from here right so let's quickly go here and i would write a log message right and in the log message i will simply print the uh okay so let's try to print this name only okay so if you are able to print this name one by one in the output that means i won't able to load all the data to the re framework and we are able to get all this transaction one by one right go here put a breakpoint here go to the main config file okay my bad uh, uh, how do you save save fine i close this config this crm is open this excel is also open right so let me save this excel close this okay anyways re framework would uh, close it right so i go to the main and i simply say debug now what would happen we are running the automation end to end just to see whether everything is correct or not right now in the right side left side you could see that the project has started okay it is initializing the setting okay it is trying to kill the process let me quickly remove this breakpoint from here i'll hit continue so it has killed the application it has reopened the application right and it is now processing transaction number 1 
right so processing transaction number 1 if i go on step into i got kitlin fine if i hit continue what would happen it will go and since since we have done nothing so the transaction is successful processing transaction number 2 step into it will go to todd continue so let me quickly remove this debugger and hit continue so diego getting the transaction number 4 sandra right let us quickly uh, let us just wait for it to complete right so if you can see i am getting all the transaction number one by one and the transaction number is also getting incremented right processing transaction number eight nine ten okay now i have got an exception it has stopped the process right so this is what i wanted to show right the last transaction which we got was okay let me open this one so I told you, right, we need to update something in get transaction. So last transaction we got was Elida, right? So for Elida, the, if you will see here, the transaction number was nine. After the transaction number got nine, set transaction status will increment it to transaction number 10. Now, as soon as the transaction number 10 comes to this one, I'll just stop this process. The transaction number 10 comes to this one get transaction data okay so let me close this close this i'll close this so now why that exception that is important to understand in the get transaction data we are entirely passing the complete data table so as of now the data table was having 10 records right so for uh, the last record which was elida the transaction number was 9 when it was processed it increment the transaction number to 10 it came to this workflow which was open workflow it came to our assign activity and in my assign activity from the data table, it try to 10, sorry, 10 minus one equal to nine. And this transaction was not available, right? Because it is exceeding the limit. So that means I need to apply a check here. So a question, what do you think? What could be the better check here? How can I actually, you know, restrict it to only work for that number? So I want to repeat it only for 10 times, depending on how many items we have in the config. So what do you think? What can we write as a condition here? Anything which comes to your mind, there is no right or wrong answer, but you tell me what can be the condition that we can stop it, you know, to execute and get the next transaction. Okay. It will if take the, the size of DT. Yes. Yes. Somebody. So let's size of the data table. Yes, that is correct. Okay. Yes. Okay. That is correct. So I'll tell you what is happening here, right? So row count, actually row count, size of the data table. So how do you do it manually, right? So manually, I know that there are only nine items. So we have to stop the process after the 10, right? So if I am able to get the row count, if I'm actually knowing that how many, what is the size of the data table, I need to run the automation till the size of the data table, right? So that is a simple check. Thank you guys for answering that. In the try catch, when we are getting this item, I simply use an activity which is called an if activity. Okay. In the if activity. And guys, I forgot to do one thing. In the main transaction, right, wherever we are reading this data here, right, when, whenever you are doing anything, right, in the uh, first one, right, we never mentioned that how many records we got, right? We might get 10, we might get 15, right? So I simply go here and add a log message because for checking that i need to go back to the excel every time so let me fix that quickly i go here and i write an info level log and i say that total records right so i am just telling uipath said this is the total records so that way i do not have to every time open the excel right so in the dt transaction data dot rows dot count count the number of rows in the data table and since this is a string dot to string that's it coming back to the get transaction data in the get transaction data i just write and condition that if the total number of row is less than equal to the current row absolutely correct right so the total number of rows if what is the total what is the row number my row number is transaction number if the transaction number is less than sorry my bad less than the total number of rows so the total number of rows dot rows dot count dot to 
okay not two string because it's a count right this simple thing has actually okay so if this is less than the transaction number right then what would happen it would actually go and run this right but since our transaction number is one and the data table start from zero there would be a less than equal to otherwise what would happen it will not process the elida's record right so simple simple statement if the transaction number is less than equal to the transaction then only you create it otherwise i need to stop the process right if there is no transaction i need to stop the process right so if there is no transaction after for the 10th record it should go to this condition now what is this condition for this condition i need to set the transaction item to nothing so that is what i simply do here in the get transaction data this guy right if i am getting the transaction number if this condition is getting satisfied well and good in the else part i simply use an assign activity and in here i say that the uh, transaction item which is out transaction item and i say that out transaction item is nothing i hope you understood why i am getting this as out transaction item is equal to nothing because in case of the range is getting exceeded i want to stop the process so to stop the process we are just going to use this one right this guy and it will stop the process now quickly save everything go here i'll close this excel okay and uh, let's try to run this automation again i go now last time i debug this time i'm running the flow right okay let's see what happens even this time i'm getting this same error or not right so in the output okay the project has started okay total records are nine it has opened the application and okay so let me go to the output transaction number eight shirley elidas and we have got no exception that means now i am able to get all the transaction one by one in process dot transaction right and in case of no data it simply moved to this one now all i have to do is what do i want to do with this data right so this till this point we have just come uh, sorry i would say we have just changed the framework from a queue framework to a data table framework right so this is how you change it now it's absolutely exactly the same way you do it for any of the process right what do you want to do with this data so i have this data which is available uh, for you know first name last name mobile number email it can be anything now right so since i have the data table you can do it anything so let's say i want to insert all this data in this one right so now if i'm able to print this data here in the assign activity i should be able to print it in the crm application as well right so here instead of the first name last name doing like this you can actually directly write this in transaction there right but i have one condition here i want to tell the business also that in case this value is blank or in case the email id is missing in case this value is missing i want to update the business that your data was missing that is why the record was not processed right so in such scenarios whenever we are using orchestrator queues we simply go and update the status in the queue but in this scenario we would need to update the status back to the excel or what you can do is you can update the status in some different place right so that is what which i am going to tell you so that's why i am just getting all these records in some variables right so last name first name we are getting in from the transaction item from this key last name i am getting from this one last name right so similarly you can continue it for all the other items right again i am not followed the best practice so this assign would be for the assign of first name right now you might be thinking why mukesh you are always so much worried about this naming and all right because if this automation is breaking in production or any higher environment and this activity is failing you will get this activity name activity name is equal to assign has faulted how would you know but if i get an exception like activity name assign first name has faulted then i exactly know that this application has faulted right so that is where i have to apply this now first name i have got last name i have got right 
I want to have a check if this first name or say let's say let let us create some scenarios. Okay, so here the last name is blank. For this one, I'll leave the first name to blank. So before I enter the data to the CRM application, I simply want to check if right. So I take an effectivity, and here I am checking the business exception. So now I am teaching you that how do you raise a business exception? Business exception for first name. Okay. If in the first name variable, so where is the first name variable? It is an str name. So I am checking a condition string dot is null or empty str first name, which is the str name. Okay. And see, I have forgot. So this is last name and this is name, right? So let's name it first name. So you can always change it from the variable and it will reflect everywhere. So job done, right? So if first name is blank or string dot is null or white space for str first name. If my first name is blank or first name is a white space, which is coming from the data row, in the sequence, I want to generate a business exception. To generate a business exception, we use a keyword which is called throw. Okay. So, in the throw, since I have to explicitly generate an exception, I have to write the new keyword and new business rule exception. Now, this is where you get a customization level. You can actually write a message. This RE framework cannot do for me. First name is not available. Right. So this RE framework cannot tell me. So that is why business exception, we have to pass our own exception. Now remind you, this business exception would be going to your business or the process owner who is running this process. So first of all, before you decide and throw any exception, you should actually go and update them, their business that yes, this kind of exception would be coming from my system so that they don't worry. Okay. Now what should I do next? Right. So I would say here, this is the throw business exception for first name. Okay. I go and save this and in case if it is not there, so I can use else, but you can always has an option to hide the else part. Similarly, if there is a business exception for the last name, right? So here I just say last name and in here, instead of the first name, I go to the properties and I say that now I want to check for the last name and I say here str last name. Okay. And in the throw, I, instead of this, I am throwing a business exception that the last name is not available. Okay. Now this is a business exception for the first name. This is for the last name. If everything is okay, right now you can do it for all these data one by one. If everything is okay, then we go and insert the data in the application, right? Now this application is already open for me to write this data into the application. Now this can be anything, right? You, it can be an SAP application. It can be a browser. It can be anything, right? So that's why keeping it simple, just using a type into activity and trying to type the thing in the first name like this. Okay. Now type into the windows form. So again, the best practice, you should always change this name, whichever it is coming type into first name. Okay. And in here, what is the text? The text is in str first name. That's it. Right. Similarly, I want to type the last name. So I just go to indicate on screen and type the last name. Right. Now this can be an entire big piece of automation where you doing all the inserting of first name, last name, everything one by one in the application. Right. So I just go here and I say insert last name. Right. That's it. Now, if everything is okay, everything is good. This transaction would be marked as successful. If there is any exception which is happening, right? Let's say this is blank. This is blank. If this is happening, everything well and good. If not happening, then we, it is RE framework is generating a system exception or it is generating a business exception. If I was using the RE framework with queues, the set transaction status was setting the transaction status, this guy, 
was setting the transaction status to the orchestrator queues but now i do not have that option so what i can do is you can actually create a new file or you can simply put the status here also whether it was successful or faulted right not a rocket science again go to the set transaction status okay in the success part what do you want to do with the success wherever the re framework setting the transaction status to success this one right i simply want to update the status in the excel to update the status in the excel i use an activity which is called right cell drag and drop it here now right cell will ask me mukesh tell me where should i update it right so i want the right cell to happen on this excel right here in the i just will just pass sorry my bad in the arguments i can see that the config object is already there so in here i simply pass in the config this is the excel dot to string which is the sheet name the sheet name is in this one right so that is the benefit right if i hard code it everywhere then you need to change it everywhere so that is the benefit of using config i just double quote say this guy dot to string right now it is asking me what do you want to write i just say successful okay now the question which cell i want to update so again doing thing cell name for status now this you can update in the different excel as well right so for me let me choose some field so let's say i want to update the status in here which is column h right so i just write here h so this is column status okay so this is h i use this one cell value go back to ui path in here in the right cell instead of this a1 right i will write so i would need to have the cell reference what is the cell reference here the cell reference is h2 h3 h4 h5 right see so i need to update the status in h4 h4 like this right now where is the h the h is in the config file in this location dot to string right and where would this 4 come from this 4 is nothing but the transaction number right so now the transaction number okay let me check what is the transaction number here in the arguments it would be there it is in uh, uh, sorry my bad let me check the transaction number okay okay yeah it is io transaction number see transaction number is already here right so i'll collapse this again io transaction number so here it is in the io transaction number but transaction number start from 1 right and i need to update the value in the cell 2 so it is 1 plus 1 transaction number plus 1 it will give me for the first one it will give me 2 One plus one equal to two dot two string. So first time it will make the status to H two. Second time H three, H four. That's it. Job done. Copy this same. So this one was for successful. Now in the set transaction status in terms of business exception for the business exception, wherever you have commented, just okay. Drag and drop the right cell again. Okay, and I'll delete this. and paste this one right so this was for business exception and here i just want to write whatever was the exception right so if you see here in the business exception whatever exception you are generating it is in this object io system exception because whatever business exception re framework will generate it will be in this location which is io business exception okay so and uh, then here it would be io business exception right okay why well, i just forgot the variable again my bad let me quickly check it is in business exception right so whatever this was in business exception dot message so dot message is the actual exception which would come in the exception object copy this same thing again 
updated in business exception in case of system exception let's say the application was not responding and you know uh, there has got some uh, issue of hang and everything the machine got hanged we want to update the status here so again i'll just delete this sorry copy paste it here and in this one if you see the argument the argument here is in system exception so whatever system exception i get dot message save this now what would happen this would actually come and update the status in this column right here based on this one so as of now we have just updated it for first name last name and this save everything close this close this close this and go to the main save everything and let's try to run this automation okay so what i will do here okay so let me put a tick, tick, tick. okay let's try to run it and see how it behaves okay so i go here and say run now first thing okay if it will go and it has it will first close this application right which is at the bottom environment is clean it has read the read crm caitlin williams and uh, see now if you see here what is happening it is every time printing the things in the same first name and the last name field right because we never told it to clear right in terms of okay so the process was completed okay so let's try to analyze the logs in the logs for the transaction number one it was successful two was successful in case of three the last name was not available here the first name was not available all these were successful if i go back to my uh sorry my bad if i just go back to the excel whichever we have put right so i'll just open this excel okay the status column is not updated why that is so so first thing let's fix that issue which we just encountered right so whenever i am typing the first name okay empty field yes actually so we i forgot to do the empty field so whenever there is a this one i just go here and i say empty field right so that i forgot to do next one i go here and i say empty the field right so once the status is successful it will simply go to the set transaction status right so now what has happened it is not it is it would be going to the set transaction status and i think am i updating the correct one okay so let me quickly do one thing right whenever you face such situation right always run it in the debug mode okay so i go into the process transaction i think till this point we are good right it was successfully able to print the things in the this one last name i'll put a breakpoint here and if you see we have made some changes right see you are also getting the total there were nine records so now let me go here and i say debug the file now what would happen it will stop at that point right and now i can actually go and see what is happening wrong why the set transaction status is not working right so this is how you actually debug a live solution because you have coded right but i might have missed something let me quickly check it has opened the application now it will go for the first transaction yes caitlin and for the second transaction so it has printed now it is printing the second transaction okay now what would happen the transaction status is successful right it is going to set transaction status see now why it is not going inside if it is successful step into yes it is successful okay going here and this is not going in this block right why it is not going in this block because that is the thing which i missed this entire block will execute if it is for a q item see it says that if the transaction item is a q item then only you execute this right for me it is not a q item so i just move it outside this one like control x control v right so it was never going inside this block because this was only applicable if it is for q items right so similarly for the business exception as well yes if it is for business uh, for a q item right then only it was executing so my bad we could have done it here or after this anywhere similarly for the system exception 
open this and uh, tick, 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 tick. set transaction status. See if the transaction is a queue item, then only it is going to run, right? So we just keep it before this because mine is not a queue item or you can just put it in the else part also and that would also work. Okay. So I'll go to main again and this time again, we are going to run the file. Okay. Now what the same thing would happen. And this time actually we should get the field also corrected, right? Now it should actually print the correct fields as well. Okay. So first time Caitlin Williams and next time when it is coming, it should. Yes. Now it has cleared the field, right? If you are noticing it is clearing the field and then re-entering the records. Okay. Okay. We'll just wait for the transaction to finish. Right. So it would only enter seven times. It was successful. Everything done. Uh, last record was also inserted. Go back to the file now. Yes. Last name is not available. Right here. This one is not available. First name is not available for this record. For this record, last name is not available. It was successful. It was successful. It was successful. So that means I was successfully able to create a RE framework with data table, right? We were successfully able to insert the data and we were able to update the status back to the Excel sheet, right? So that was all about this use case, guys. I hope you guys understood that how actually we can convert a RE framework to work with data tables. What are the things you need to consider? Now this application, it can be anything, right? It can be any big automation of data entry, data project. All you have to do is just take care of the data validation, exception handling, business exception, system exception. Okay, fine. Now I would like to take a pause. And if you guys have any questions, you can ask me over the chat, right? Let me go through the chat. Okay, so somebody has asked me a question uh, that can you explain the max that retry thing? Okay, so what is that retry thing? So if you see here, whenever I am getting a system exception, right? So what is RE framework doing for the system exception? It is retrying the thing. So let's say I will just pull up a notepad to make it better understand. Okay, so I have got, let's say, 20 transactions in the queue or in the data row anywhere, right? First got successful, second got successful, third got successful, fourth got successful, fifth got a system exception, sixth again got a system exception, seventh again got a system exception. And this system exception is critical, okay? That it's not responding and because of XYZ error, it is not working. Now, question Do you want to run it from 8 to 50? If the condition is yes, your value should be zero. But let's say if you are continuously getting system exception for let's say four, five, six transaction, and you instruct that I do not want any more failures, keep the transaction as it is and don't set the transaction status, right? So that is where you would use that property. Okay. In the config file. I hope that answers. Okay. For this use case, the input file in the same bot. Okay, so for this use case, the input file as of now, I have kept it configurable. But if you are actually trying to build any such use case, right, you can have a use case where you get this file as an input from an email. So in the init all application, you can actually go and use get outlook mail message, get SMTP mail message, read this Excel as an attachment, download it, and then update the status back to the Excel and send the Excel. So that would be our end to end use case. Now the possibilities are limitless. You can directly get it from a shared location. You can download it from some portal, right? You could have a first portal which have all these details. So you write a bot in the init all application to download the data from the robot or that application. And then once you have got transaction, you enter it into some application, some website, some database, anything, right? So any data entry automation can be done with this one. Okay. Any more question guys on the chat or you guys can unmute yourself and ask the questions if you have any. What if both the first name and the last name has a business exception? Will the status message will override? Okay, that's a good question. Let's try to do it, right? 
so ideally what would happen see as soon as the business exception is thrown okay it is not going to execute any more activity after it right so if the first name is blank so let me go back to the quickly to the code and show it to you what happens in case you throw an exception as soon as the exception is thrown it is not going to execute any automation which is written after that which simply means it will simply go and write that thing to there now the you might have an obvious question right i want to write all the statuses right every time i want to write all the statuses right so you no need to throw it here you would need to have only one throw so uh, both of these if condition you can combine together and say if this is blank or this is blank or this is blank or you could write this if this is blank and the last name is also blank then you throw a consolidated throw which says that first name and last name are blank but ideally in this automation what would happen as soon as you throw it is not going to execute any of the steps for the right so whenever the first name was blank see first name was blank it didn't executed any more automation directly went to the catch and set transaction status right but you can always customize it as per your need okay if you wrote it to the say column d would it move the other column or override the d it will simply override because right cell right so if you see here how do i know it will override okay let me explain that as well in the set transaction status right cell properties okay so you go here okay so if you read about this one right write the text in the spreadsheet if the sheet does not exist create if the value exists it is overwritten can you see here it is written in the description of re framework right of the activities i would say sorry for the activity description it is clearly mentioned if the sheet is not existing it will create the sheet if the value is there it would be overwritten right so i hope that answers somebody has an question of if i am reading the excel file from dispatcher bot can i do the update the status in the same excel file from the performer right absolutely right so for the performer robot so update of status right so update of status is done with an activity which is called write cell activity and write cell activity expects only the excel name the cell and the value if you are able to provide all of them you could directly do it from the performer as well fine guys so do you have any more questions or are we good to close any feedback anything for me right which we can do so we would be keep continuing these sessions okay we would be you know having more and more use cases like this so for the next week we are not exactly next week i don't know what when would be the next session we would be creating more use cases all these use cases would be actually recorded and available right so this use case which i was showing you previously right this one this hr use case this is end to end use case which is built on re framework step by step right and you would find this on my youtube channel as well right so i have a dedicated youtube channel which name is this one if i simply go here i think this is uploaded on my youtube channel only right so i have list of use cases which i have made all are step by step mostly targeted to students like flight use case right so this is my channel right so and uh, yes yeah so these are all the use cases see generate offer letter travel buddy shopping robot data reconciliation use cases everything is there right in case you want to practice along you could just go to any of the use case right and you would actually practice this to practice this you would require the input files so you could simply drop me an email and i would share you those files okay so these are my social media details i have an instagram where i keep regularly updating any fresher jobs or any jobs which i am having right so that is the youtube linkedin and my email id right mm -hmm.